Hello students, thank you for coming around this screen and joining me for another of our online youth Bible studies. And I did want to give you an announcement right up front about this one. This is our Bible study. We're gathered here on Friday night, uh, December the 18th. Uh, this will be the last online youth Bible study for the remainder of this month. And we will pick back up again on the other side of the holidays, uh, which will be January the 8th. January the 8th, Friday night. We'll pick back up with doing our Friday night Bible studies at 7 o'clock. Um, I just wanted to give you a heads up about that up front before I forget. And also in the email that you would have gotten with the study guide attached today, uh, you would have gotten that information also uh, reminding you about that. So I uh, just wanted to be sure I said that up front. We're continuing our series called A Biblical Worldview, and we are on uh, part number five, part number five. And each week we're asking a different question because remember, belief shapes behavior. And so it's important we have the right belief system. As believers in Jesus Christ, that belief system should be rested in the truth of God, the truth that comes from His Word, comes from God, from our relationship with Him, and our understanding as a Christian from God's Word. And so this week's question is, what is right and wrong? What is right and wrong? Can this question even be truly answered? Some people would say no. They would say that the answer must be based on someone's personal opinion, so therefore it changes. Since people have different opinions, and since opinions often change with time, some do not believe in this world, many actually in this world do not believe, that there is a set rule of right and wrong that can exist. However, as believers in Jesus Christ, in recognition of who God is, and who we are as his creation, we can understand from God's word a lot about this issue of right and wrong. Consider with me these truths. God is the source of all truth. God is the source of all truth. Psalms chapter 31 verse number five says this, into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. The psalmist was recognizing in his praise to God that God is the God of truth. A second truth that I want you to see, number one, is that God is the source of truth. Number two, God himself, his character, God himself, is the standard for what is good and right. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse number four says it like this, he is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are justice, a God of truth and without injustice. Righteousness and upright is he. God himself, his very character, is the standard for what you and I know to be what is good and right. A third truth that I want you to see is we recognize that God, who God is and that who we are is his creation. And that is God is the source of all truth. Number two, God himself, his actual character is the standard for what is good and right. And number three, God has revealed to us what is right and wrong in the Bible. I'm going to read that one again. God has revealed to us what is right and wrong in the Bible. I have a couple of passages of scripture for this one. There's many more. I hope you know when we're doing these studies together, I'm really giving you the basics of it. I'm giving you a foundation for these truths, but there are many more scriptures in the Bible to support this. I'm just giving you some of the ones that are most pertinent to the truth that we're learning. This truth being God has revealed to us what is right and wrong in the Bible. Psalms chapter 19, verses 7 through 11. Psalms chapter 19, verses 7 through 11 says this. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. 
The judgments of the Lord are true and righteousness altogether. More are they to be desired than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant, that's speaking of you and I, moreover by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is a great reward. That's what the psalmist wrote for you and I in Psalms 19. Later on, Jesus in John chapter 17, verse number 17, it's recorded for us a lengthy, that chapter is a recording of a lengthy prayer time that Jesus was having with God in heaven above. We refer to it in Bible study as the high priestly prayer. It was Jesus praying for us and John took the time to record much of that prayer he was having with God. And Jesus said this in John 17 and 17 when he was praying for you and I. Jesus said, sanctify them by your truth. He was talking to God by your truth. Your word is truth. A fourth principle, a fourth truth rather, that you and I are learning as we are realizing and we recognize that God, who God is, that we are his creation, we understand these things about right and wrong according to three principles, three biblical truths we looked at already. God is the source of all truth. Number two, God himself, his character is a standard for what is good and right. Number three, God has revealed to us what is right and wrong in the Bible. And number four, we have a perfect picture of what is good, right, and loving in the person of Jesus Christ. This one's a long one, so I want to read it again. We have a perfect picture, you and I have a perfect picture, of what is good, right, and loving in the person of Jesus Christ. John 1.14 says this, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ is who's being talked about there. And when He came to this earth, He came to this earth full of grace and truth. Gee, the word, Bible also records for us in John chapter 12, verses 35 and 36, where he says this, Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. Jesus there is showing us that if we walk with him, we walk in the light, and we know where we're going because we're going in the right direction. We also had the reassurance from Jesus in the words of John chapter 14, verse number six, where Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus there again reminding us that he is the way to heaven, the way through to salvation. He is the truth about that. Truth is a person and his name is Jesus. And he also said that he is the life and he is the way that we get to God. He is the way that we make it to heaven. Absolute truth. Let's talk about that for just a moment. Absolute truth. Thought people's opinion, thought people's opinions may change. God's law does not. What people think, their opinions and everything else is going to change, but God's law does not. He is truly unchangeable. What he said was good and holy 2,000 years ago in the Bible when it was first written is still good, true, and holy today. The principles of truth God has given apply to every nation, culture, and person today. It's not for a certain ethnic group and not another. It's not for one nationality or another. It's not for one uh, nation and not for another nation or one continent, not for another continent. It is God's truth period. Our basis for truth is the absolute truth of God's word. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 35 is recorded like this, Jesus speaking, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Jesus was reminding us that a lot of things are going to come and go Everything will go away at some point, 
but that his word will remain forever. Meaning his truth will remain forever. Meaning his truth that was given then is still his truth today and always will be. The impact of moral truth within our worldview. You and I were making this personal. From understanding what a marriage should look like to grasping the right way to show love, we must recognize that God is the standard and judge of all morality. Doesn't matter what it is. God is the standard and judge of all morality. We must not be swayed by popular opinions or the changing views of those that are around us. God has given us the answers as to what is right and wrong in His Word, your Bible, and our focus should be to stand by them and make them a part of our lives. John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32, and these will be the closing verses for us in this Bible study, says, And Jesus said to those Jews who believed Him, If you abide in My Word, you are My disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free and the truth will make you free. Students, what I want to give you for your homework this week, last week I know we asked a number of questions. We looked last week as what the role of friends are in my life, as answering that question. And I ask you to evaluate your friendships, those that are friends toward you, and how you are a friend toward others. This week, though, I want to give you a little bit different challenge, a little bit different homework, and that is this. Go back through this study guide, that was emailed out to you. And if you didn't get one and you'd like one, all you have to do is leave us a message with an email address. We'll be glad to get that sent out to you. Or I quote these verses all the way through this brief video. You can easily just pause it and look up the verse yourself. But here's your homework for this week. Choose one of these passages of scripture that I've mentioned in this Bible study tonight. Choose one of them and memorize it. Write it down on a piece of paper and carry it around your pocket and memorize it. Maybe put it in your notes app on your phone and pull it out and look at it. You might even want to make a, make a creative, artful meme out of it and put the verse in there and put it as a screensaver on your phone or your tablet or the screen on your laptop. Whatever you do, put, tape it up next to your bed, a note with that verse on it. But let's take a passage of scripture from this Bible study and memorize it and put that truth deep down inside of us. Why is that so important? The Bible says that we hide God's word in our heart to help us not sin against him. The Bible also tells us that God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. That word of God that you put down inside of you, that truth will take root in your life and bring forth a harvest of truth in your life and in the ways that you live and in the decisions that you make. Let me pray with you, for you, and over you now, specifically that God would help you to pick a verse, pick a passage of scripture from this Bible study and memorize that. Let's pray. God, we love you and we thank you. Grateful for you. Grateful for your word, the Bible that you've given us, God. So Father, I ask you right now that you'd help each and every one of these students, God, that one of these passages of scripture would be alive to them, that it would come alive, that it would pique their interest, that it'd be something that they'd want to know more and more about. And let that be what they memorize, that particular part of your word that they hide in their hearts, God. Father, I thank you for every one of these students. Bless them. Help them to have a marvelous time of celebrating Christmas, the birth of your son, a wonderful beginning to 2021, another year of serving you, God. Take all of our lives, these students and myself, God, and use us in your kingdom for your good glory, God. In your name we pray, amen and amen. Students, love you very, very much. Believing that you are going to have a blessed and Merry Christmas as we celebrate the birth of our son, Jesus Christ, and uh, believing that you are going to have a wonderful time of closing the book on 2020 and opening a new chapter in your life called 2021. God bless you a whole bunch of students. Look forward to seeing you next time together in virtual Bible study will be January the 8th. Be sure you put it on your calendar. See you then. God bless you. Bye now.